All right. Welcome back, everyone, and happy Tuesday. We are here with another Learning Tech Talks where we are continually exploring the landscape of learning tech and all things, honestly, workplace tech, learning, whatever it is. Uh, and we, I'm looking forward to today's conversation. I'm joined by David Warren. He's the VP of Strategic Partnerships at a company that pretty much everyone who watches and listens to this, I'm confident the name of the company is going to be very familiar to you, maybe for different reasons though, it's Prezi. So we're gonna be talking about Prezi and I'm excited to get into this because I I remember Prezi from way back in the day, but it's come a long way and it's much more than it was than I remember early in the days and I've used it since. So I'm looking forward to getting into some of that, talking about some of the insights about presentations and engagement, but thanks for joining me, David. Good to be here, Christopher, thanks for having us. All right. Well, so before we get into it, as folks start kind of tuning in and joining the live stream, I always like to do a little bit of intro stuff. We do those things backstage, but then you know we get to repeat it here because it's just that much more fun. So for those who are joining, comment in, let us know where you are located in the world. But David, for those I know, but for those who are here who don't know where you're located, where are you in the world right now? Yeah, so I am coming to you live from my garage uh in San I wasn't Diego, gonna California. get I wasn't gonna disclose disclose the specific location but that's awesome you're it, you wouldn't th know it's a garage by the way if I flip my camera you'd see like a ping pong table and bikes and wetsuits and stuff so uh so I'm coming to you from my garage in San Diego California and it's chilly and the door's open so a leaf blower may come through in the middle of our conversation <laughs> And um, and it's it's chilly though enough that I'm wearing my my pullover with my board shorts today. Okay, P pullover with your board shorts. I like that. So what's chilly for San Diego? Mm. It's gonna drop below sixty five today Fahrenheit. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, that's not chill. I'd be We're breaking out the. I'd be breaking out the board shorts and tank tops right. if, if it was sixty five in Wisconsin right now. So you've. We've got very different uh, things, but I've got to say that is the most professional looking garage background I have, I think I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. I've got my, uh, I've got my fake succulents, which my kids told me was, was insufficient. Uh, and so they added their own kind of crafted flowers and everything up there. It's, it's great. Oh, so your kids have an opinion. Your kids have an opinion on your virtual backdrop. They do. They do because like we all adjusted to going online and they're yeah. now native to it. And so, uh, and so they remind me of best practices. <laughs> I love and, it. The, middle so the kids are like, dad, you can't just have fake succulents right. in the background. You, you can't we wear gotta, a pattern we shirt, dad. Spice it hoses with the camera feed. I'm like, <laughs> that's great. Go so clean up your room. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Now just go get, go get me a, a bottle of water or something while you're right. At it. Right. Oh, that is super funny. Well, if if the leaf blower comes a blowing and uh, anything like that, and you have to close your garage door, that's right. Uh, I've got no my I've got my garage door clicker at my desk in case I ever that have is to. That's so like, funny. Soundproof things, Christopher. See what what you need to get now, and this has nothing to do with what we're talking. But I actually love this because this actually kind of kicks off some of the things we're talking about. How things have changed, like from a work environment standpoint, and some of these things you wouldn't be having these conversations. I mean, you might have in certain niches and people were doing yeah. remote work before the pandemic, but now it's so commonplace that it's like, oh, where are you? Oh, the garage. Interesting type yeah, of a thing. Wow. So much so like I even have, you'll have to get one of these. I have a camera that's on a swivel because Sweet. people ask the weather all the time. And now I can just click a button boom. and boom, Look at that. I can flip it around. Boom. And then I just flip it around and then you're back to me. Isn't yeah. that fancy? <laughs> I think I have the same basketball hoop that you do, by the way. Um, oh, right. Yeah, you know, we, okay. used to, we used to start meetings and we do these intros and it was always this really awkward uh, kind of Sadie Hawkins vibe to it. And um, and I actually learned more about people by looking behind them than I did in their little canned intro. Right. Like I learned yeah. that you like Texas because of the, the poster behind you. I learned uh, that that you're not a nurturing person because the plant behind you is safe. Like, that's all these right. things and I learned about you having this. That's right. Yeah. I know. And I actually, that's probably one of my favorite things about this is the fact I feel like we've gotten to know the professionals we work with on a level that historically we've just never been able to do before because people, we, we right. used to come 
compartmentalize our lives so much. It was like, oh yeah, you can know the work yeah. me, but I don't really want but you knowing how, like the, the me me. How cool to just go like, hey, time out on this meeting. Can you walk me through the pictures behind you or <laughs> your books in the bookshelf? Because that's really interesting to me. Yeah. I know. Well, I had one guest, Taylor, um, Taylor Blake joined. If you ever get a chance, go back and look through the archives. For those of you watching or listening, I would recommend you all do the same because Taylor Blake, by far, I think, coolest setup for his his area in that he was in the basement. He's in a basement, but you would not know this because he's got so much natural light coming in. And then he flips his camera and in his basement window, there's like a full-blown terrarium in this yeah. thing, like plants. And I'm like, that is so cool. Like that is so yeah. cool that you put the time and thought into that. He's like, yeah, well then that way I can just kind of look out and feels like I'm looking into Nate. I'm like that. I like that. <laughs> right. Right. Some people have pushed it too far though. Right. They're like, they did. 15 feet back from the camera lying on a white tiger rug with a fire going. You're like, no, <laughs> not appropriate. Not appropriate. No, yeah. Not that, th th those are be, <laughs> those will be the other lessons our kids will teach us about right. presentations and going, you know, dad, it's time for you to kind of, you know, stop time. doing that. It's time. Right. It's time to retire that shirt or maybe, you know, it's not quite so funny like you think it is type. Yeah. Of Oh, I, I love it. Well, um, you know, so as we get into this, you know, we're going to talk a little bit, actually a lot related to this topic, because so much of what Prezi is focused on is about making this kind of stuff more engaging and actually drawing people in and making it more experiential, which I think is a really fantastic thing, because the reality is, especially at a time where so much of what we do is this it's we're behind a camera where it's, we're seeing the world in 2d it's an opportunity to go 3d with it but before we get into it how did you even end up you you told me you've been there three years but how did you even right. end up at prezi uh my my whole career has been in software um and on okay. the uh on the business side of it the commercial side of it although my my first gig was actually running trade shows uh for a software company and it was great because you go afield with a salesperson and an engineer. And so you learn both sides. You learn the tech and the product and okay. you learn the go to market and the messaging and everything. And like the big shows like Dreamforce and stuff are fun. But like the rubber meets the road at the uh, the medium sized ballroom at the Minneapolis Marriott of like a breakout. <laughs> session. Um, yeah. And so you've, you've just got to learn. You've got to learn the tech and the talk. And uh, and so that was that was formative. Um I started a software. I feel like I'm going to stop you there because I think yeah. that point you bring up, especially for people in my industry, can relate to that because, you know, you see like the Steve Jobs thing where he's, you know, you know, showing the iPhone and there's a whole yeah. team of people and camera for crew sure. and all this stuff. He doesn't have to do anything. He just walks out there and does his thing and it's right. all being right. done. But it's like you said, it's those, <laughs> okay, you're doing this breakout. You don't know what room you're going into and no. go. For and sure. you've got to figure it out. That's the best. And like, we lost that, right? Cause at least like we, we started going to trade shows again this year. And when you walk into it and you've got these talking points, right? Everything to describe and position your product and everything. And by the time you're done, you're pulling people out of the aisle into the booth going, do you hate meetings? Come here. Do you want to do fewer, <laughs> better meetings? Come here. And it just, it, um, it, it strips it of the kind of white collar, foo-foo-ness that we wrap around stuff and it makes it so much more human anyways okay. i started off in trade shows um yeah. i started a software company uh in the sales enablement space which is kind of a, a cousin to learning it and is. development. it is it's definitely yeah. like a second cousin to learning and development yeah yeah for sure and um and that went well but not well enough and um and <laughs> got acquired um by a company called showpad and when i say acquired it's like it's, it's the same way that like a kind family acquires a stray dog on the side of the road, right? Let's not get too excited about me having an acquisition. Um, and um, I was going to say, it's, it's A though. It's still, it's a win. An acquisition is a win, but I love that it's like, <laughs> I love your we analogy. Don't to, we don't need to like make it more than it was, right? And, uh, okay. but in the course of that process, my best, the, my best moments had been presenting with Prezi actually. And I met the Prezi folks just in the course of being in the industry and, um, and always felt like there was something there and always also was a little bit upset with them uh, because whenever I would present with Prezi, 
hands would go up and 50% were like, what did you just use? What did you, what did you do there? Um, uh, which was not why How I was How did you do up. that? Yeah. It was like, it was magic. Right. You were almost like a magician when you used yeah, a present. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and so I would keep coming back to the folks at Prezi and love them and felt like there was really something special here. And then the time came where they were getting ready to launch a new product. And, um, and Prezi had always been kind of off on its own and this kind of special thing that special people did in special moments. And, um, and we've sort of gone through an evolution where now people don't really care about that. And uh, what, whoever we're in competition with, they don't care. They want their stuff to work together. And so I was hired to yes. do partnerships for Prezi. And, um, okay. and again, to just kind of strip it down to, to make sure it works with the stuff they're already using in a way that's higher value and they click fewer things and manage fewer windows. Okay. Okay. It's interesting you share kind of that transformation or even just that shift from a, you know, what are, what are really our strategic priorities in terms of how we do this? Because like you said, I mean, I think back to when I first was introduced to Prezi and we joked about this backstage, you know, it was one of those things you were going to do a college presentation or maybe your first presentation that you were going to a conference and you put it up. And like you said, everybody was like, wow. You know, after yeah, they've seen yeah. C after C of death by bullet point TLDR yeah. slides and suddenly it's it's moving and it's dynamic and it's really fascinating the way you did yeah. and that was it but it was kind of this niche you know you felt kind of yeah. cool you're like yeah well you know I use Prezi I don't use PowerPoint right. I think you said I said I think you said it backstage where it was kind of like you were giving the middle finger to PowerPoint going like right. I'm kind of standing against the man That's in my presentation you be, right <laughs> and, and you flash forward now and um, and Microsoft is one of our best partners. And there's this like peace between us because the fact is Microsoft customers want to use Prezi in a Microsoft yes. Teams call, or they want to use yes. it on stage, or they want to do a, some combo of technology. And we just need to like get over our ego and work well together, right? As I tell my kids, nobody thinks about you as much as you do. <laughs> and... And so let's get it's over whatever true. kind of little differences we we have imagined or manufactured and do stuff for the customer. So that's been really fun to see those walls break down and, and have users have success because of it. I love that you, first of all, one, that you highlight that, because I think this is a message that I try and send because I you know, we were talking about audience and there's a fair amount of vendors that listen too, because they're always curious, like what's happening in the space and what are other vendors doing? And I think that message is such an important one to reinforce because that is where I see some of the biggest gaps is there's still this land grabbing happening right. of like, well, we're putting up our defensive territory because we don't want, you know, people using other products that in our tool, because we are the panacea. And it's like, the reality is people are going to, yeah. and let's be okay with that and not battle against each other, but just figure out how do we work really well together? Because the reality is not everybody's going to, but there is going to be that group that is, and they want it to work well. So stop trying yeah. to make barriers. Right, right. Everyone's life is hard enough. Like don't make it harder yeah. because you're being Hatfield and McCoy between two logos that nobody's heard of. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, so, but let's talk a little bit because I do want to jump into, you know, while I said probably many of the people who are watching have probably had some exposure to Prezi or were that person in the audience that went, wow, what was that? And they heard Prezi and they went, I'm going to have to remember that. And then they may have forgotten or actually gone and done something about it. But when you describe it to people, how do you describe what Prezi is? Because to me, I have in my mind, but I also know there's almost a trifecta to the product now yeah. that goes beyond what some people may even have as their nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting because I've, I've always worked in like big enterprise software where nobody in my family knew what I did. Right. <laughs> it was always like, you can't explain ERP to your like mother-in-law. No. Right? No, or an and HCM, so, or yeah, you can't be like, oh, I do this. Can't do it. But a lot of people are like, oh, Prezi, like you saved my bacon and my <laughs> midterms in university, right? And so that's <laughs> great. Um, and it's retained that that specialness and that DNA while it's grown up and and caught on to new forms of expression and everything. And so 
I think most people remember us from like the zooming canvas presentation that you yes. used to get. And these were used. Yeah, I was for kind of going back to the kids song thing. Cause I have a lot of kids. It's kind of like that. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea, you know, and it kind of like zoomed yeah. in and zoomed you in. Dive and then into zoomed it. Right. Right. And, <laughs> and so, uh, and so a lot of people remember for that. And it would be for those big moments, right? A big midterm project or uh, a midterm project all the way up to Bono on the Ted stage used Prezi to, to be at their best. Right. Yeah. And what's interesting is that you used to measure engagement from the stage by like eye contact Right. And are people on their phones or not? Are they looking at you? But now you and I both know really good fakers out there. Now we're all on screen and they might be looking right into the pinhole of the camera. But, for, <laughs> but their monitor. They've got 18 other windows open their and monitor they're not really like paying. This. Right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Right. And so they're totally looking you in the eye. And this is their monitor of all their work stuff. And now that people are working from home, They've got all of their like personal stuff going, right? They've got a little YouTube thing <laughs> over here and Instagram up there, right? And and uh, and so the I like the pop up ad, by the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Play the quiz. Um, and so when you're trying to get people to focus on you and the content you really care about, um, this is where Prezi really shines. So this is what Prezi looks like uh, post COVID which is the ability to take all that zooming cinematic movement and not lose the interpersonal connection that you want to have with okay. your audience. Um, and so okay. you're, you're seeing me use our core product, which is present, which is what people know us for. And this is our expression yes. of it in video right now. Um, and okay. so we actually, we actually launched this in November of 2019. Oh, which proved to be very prescient. Wow, that was a very that was a very serendipitous timing of the launch of that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and so, uh, and so, um, we weren't reacting to the pandemic or scrambling to put something together. We were actually listening to our users, who more and more were going online and wanted to carry that same magic over into this type of conversation. So, um, so you mentioned the kind of trifecta behind. Uh, Prezi now. So these are the, the three products that make up Prezi, just to familiarize mm -hmm. your audience with it again. So present is what um, is what a lot of folks know, right? That's um, that's being on the TED stage and, and some great, great customers, right? Uh, Sony, TED, Discovery, Salesforce. We have actually 80% of the global 2000 use Prezi in some way. And Which amazing. doesn't surprise me because yeah. going back to your point, before a lot of people's going back to your point of like when you worked for big enterprise softwares, people didn't know they may have like heard of Salesforce or something. But if you right. said, if you say I work for Workday, the average person is like, huh? You know, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So, but Prezi was really in many regards a consumer product, which I think. Yeah. Many consumers were familiar with it, whether they used it for work or not. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with that. That's that thing that I do when I need to make a presentation. Because some yeah. people may not have even really used PowerPoint all that much. Right. They would just go straight to Pre Prezi because they're like, well, I need to do a presentation. So I use Prezi. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And so this is, our, this is our core product. And it's that Zooming Canvas presentation. And we find that it drives just a ton of engagement and interactivity that slides or just speaking doesn't do. Um, and then, uh, and then a second product, Prezi Video, which I'm using on the call right now, um, takes uh, the zooming canvas and essentially removes the background, okay. and then we layer it through the video feed um, so that you can present like this. And man, this was just a lifesaver for a lot of people during the pandemic who were struggling with engaging. Like, okay, we all thought the economy was going to shut down, and then it really just hit Control Alt Delete, and now we're all in our homes <laughs> trying to do this. Yeah. And I don't know how. And um, and so we just did a, a ton of, uh, of work with folks to do that. The, again, this core expression of present through video. Um, and uh, and you're seeing me use it right now. But what's cool here is that it's not just for the live version, which I've been using, but this is what it looks like to record a Prezi video. And so if you're a person who has to constantly drive alignment, um, you can do a recorded presentation and then drop that into Slack or your collaboration tool or whatever okay. um, and have that as an asset that just works over and over again. And then you can call a meeting to talk about stuff 
instead of presenting. In many regards, what you're talking about, and I think this is something that um, actually last week, not last week, last week was Thanksgiving, but the week before I had a company on that they specialize in kind of the video workflow side of yeah. things. And what we talked about was the fact that we are not using video enough, even though there's lots of video happening, using it strategically right. in terms of how are we using video content to convey messages, to communicate, like you said, asynchronously. And in the learning yeah. space, you're, we flip the classroom where it's like, well, how do we get people to go through the content? And then let's use the live time to actually discuss, debate, right. make critical decisions. But I think right. many people struggle with that. And video is a very intimidating thing for people sometimes. You're for like, sure. Oh, video. For like, sure. I'll maybe go on a Zoom call and hit record, which is just an awful experience to sit right. and try and watch back through that. Totally. And I think people started off and they were doing these meetings where it was like a, a, a 60 minute meeting, 50 minutes of which was somebody speaking. And then yeah. like five minutes of the loudest person asking an unrelated question. And then five minutes of like, social cues of like, how do I get off this call? And, yes. um, and I think there is, there's technology that helps. Like I, I think we help, but there's also some best practice around, I'm going to record that presentation, drop it into Slack. Uh, I mean, Prezi's in 10 different time zones, right? So we're going to drop this yeah. into Slack. And then when I call a meeting, it's about a subject matter that you better have brushed up on through the video, but the meeting is about What's a what's something what's a high consequence topic that is unclear and collaboration will help? Yeah. And then you call a meeting. And so I'm hopeful that all this technology helps us do fewer, better meetings. Um, otherwise, we're going to keep falling into that presentation trap. And no wonder people are going to be fatigued. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, what's interesting is, you know, in the and I and I think we've got the thing with it is we've got a long way to go here just in general, because. In learning and development, we've been talking about this. And in education, we've been talking about this for a very long time, that live time is the absolute worst area to use, do knowledge transfer activity. Like, hey, we're live. Yeah. Let me just tell you something. You can tell yeah. me something a thousand other more efficient ways. Yes. Let's use that time to interact and collaborate type of a thing. And we're still, I would say the industry that, their primary job is to do this, is still figuring out how do we actually incorporate that. So then you think about the workforce as a whole that went from, at least we were in a conference room where there was some interaction and maybe decent right. bagels and things like that to now I'm sitting at my desk with 37 right. other things that are way more interesting than yeah. this call is to me. And quite frankly, I can just listen to it because I don't, there's nothing for me to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. So it's it's been tough and we're learning and I think it's day one in a lot of ways on that. Um, the, the third product that we have is Prezi Design, which we got through an acquisition. And this is because okay. there's, a, there's a special class of, um, of visual communication that's really about kind of infographics, uh, special graphics. So you, you can create some of these, this is a lot like a Canva or a Microsoft okay. Design. But at the end of the day, it really excels at data visualization. So when you have a story to tell with data, um, this is where Prezi Design really excels. So, so this is the three parts of the platform. And yeah, if you have not uh, reacquainted yourself or want to give them a spin, you just go to Prezi.com. We still offer uh, a really high value freemium uh, package uh, that folks will, uh, will move on up into once they want more features. Okay. And then... So on that, just to kind of highlight the three pieces, because I'm curious kind of what drove, I, I think you highlighted a little bit, but there was the presentation piece, which I think many people are familiar with that goes back. You had the yeah. serendipitous timing of one, more people are in, because even pre-pandemic, we were doing way more of these meetings, yep. even when we were still in the office. Like I remember yeah. being in the office sometimes and going, why do we come in here? We all sit at our desks behind a webcam anyway, because we're yeah. so globally distributed. It, it was kind of silly. So the right. pandemic just kind of fulfilled a prophecy that was coming anyway. Yeah. So you were kind of getting on board with that going, you know, there's more video stuff happening. And then was the design, it came through an acquisition, but was some of that just recognizing the need that, you know, people are, I actually say one of the things that I would say is 
as an employee in many regards, you almost have some degree of your job is content creation. Yeah. And many people are very ill-equipped to do that, or they don't feel comfortable with it at all. So was that kind of where that grew out of was, hey, we're asking people to create more content. It's becoming more of a demand to them. We probably should do something to help them do that because not everybody's a graphic designer. Right, right. Ab absolutely. So the thing about Prezi, you mentioned everybody's you know heard of it or knows about it at some point. We've got over 105 million worldwide users. And so the okay. great thing about that is that you can listen to them and they ask for things and they're bringing in, they're trying to hack their own charts and, and, and shoehorn their own data in. And so that really surfaced the need to have this sort of infographics tool. And really, they're just super powerful when they're all together, right? It's not dry. Um, it's interpersonal. It's immersive. Um, and it's interesting, right? Because I'm, I'm now slipping into buzzwords, right? I've run out of authentic things to say at the 25 minutes. <laughs> um, We've reached that part of the presentation. Yeah, right. So you, 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 you hear, we're just surrounded by these buzzwords, right? Of like immersive, engagement, inclusion, all these things. And everyone, I think, is trying. They're sincerely trying, right? Uh, wh yeah. Whether you're back in the office or not, um, only 7% of people are going to be all in the office. Somebody is yeah. always going to be on a screen. And so how do you how do you serve them, right? And I think if if I can keep from trying to like use a buzzword and I just go back to what people have historically used Prezi for, it's because they want to stand out. Like it's their moment. They want to stand out. Um, they want to engage an audience um, or they just care about a subject so much that they want to give it special treatment. And, okay. and the thing that Prezi brings to them in that moment is, um, is this kind of cinematic movement that we talked about um, and then visual storytelling and then a structure that can adjust to the conversation and make sense to people. And okay. I, think, Got it. I think within that, it resonates with the moment. I think that's been a very durable thing for us over the last 12 years, even as times have changed. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting. And then I actually want to kind of flip it to something because I'm curious your take on this. But I, I like that you highlighted in the design side that you focus, you really focus on the numbers uh, point of it. Because honestly, when I think about presentations, that usually is where it dries up really yeah. quick for folks. Yeah. And even in traditional tools like Excel, people are really bad at knowing how to even convert yes. the tables into it. And they're very yeah. broken and clunky. And most people just give up and they're like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to take right. a screenshot or I'm just going to dump this table on the slide. Yeah. And that is like watching paint dry when you're like, and now we're going to talk through this financials table. If you look at column C, row yeah. 18 and people are like oh my gosh this is terrible right right and uh I, I like to say there's more fiction in excel than there is in word and <laughs> good data good data should tell a good story yes right or it should illuminate a gap or a topic that needs to be addressed and it so often just feels like a man it just feels like a hostage video right? Like somebody's off yeah. screen making you read the script and it's just awful. Yeah. Well, and, and actually, you know, I think this is a topic that comes up a fair amount is the fact that even though we have so much technology that is capturing a lot more data than we've ever had, yeah, the data storytelling is to me, one of the biggest gaps that still exists yeah. where, you know, you'll see things thrown on a screen and it's like, and here's the numbers. And, and right. there's nothing going, like, so what? So yeah. why, why should I care about that? Or what is this even communicating to me other than a bunch of yeah. numbers? Yes. You, you, we're still relying on people's rational self-interest and like professionalism and everything. But man, can we help them? Like, right. Can we encourage them? Can we make it easier? So that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Okay. So... Where I wanted to transition on this one, and I'm really curious what you've seen as, you know, obviously some of these new features came pre-pandemic. Right. So I have to imagine with over a million users using it, then using it as you went through this transition, there has to have been some lessons learned along the way or things that you've seen. And one of the things we talked about backstage was there were some things that maybe 
came not as a surprise, but like, oh, that was an interesting thing that kind of came out of that or where we saw customers go with things that we didn't expect. And then there were some things that stayed pretty consistent. Are there like, what are kind of your reflections over the past three years? You've been there three years now. Yeah, I mean, it was a fascinating three years to be here, right? To be at a company. I would imagine. At the center of like visual communications at a time when relationships got reduced to a square piece, a square piece of glass. Um, and so what's interesting was this sort of um, this sort of spastic response of okay. a bunch of new tools and ways of doing things. Um, so all these new ways of doing things <laughs> interacting with um, with human nature, which didn't change because of the pandemic. Right. Okay. Human nature is like still the same, no matter what the environment that's happening. And so um, we wanted people to stand out and engage. And some people turn their cameras off. And and so uh, we went through this process of like, no, this is the new way of doing things. People who are quiet in meetings are now quiet with their cameras off. And okay. um, and so instead of trying to force them into it, it's just to offer ourselves up to people who do want to stand out and engage or really care about the subject matter. And so I think we had a moment where we thought, man, this is, this is, everybody's going to be doing it this way. And the reality is humans stayed humans and the ones who wanted to be uh, high achieving really engaged and dipped in. And, and it's been, it's been fascinating. So how do you serve them, but, but still be inclusive to people who don't want to do that? And so we okay. tried to do a couple things in response to that that we didn't we didn't build into the original. So let me let me ask first. a clarifying question to see if I'm I'm yeah. getting at what you're saying. And then I want I told you I was going to do this, but like was you know as you kind of transition, I'm just thinking of the onset of Prezi video where yeah. it was like okay, hey, now we have this video thing that on camera you can present while you're on camera, and that's going to be great because everybody's going to be on camera now. And so yeah. everybody's going to, we're just going to be transitioning off of presentations into right. this visual design. And that's what everybody's going to be doing. And it turned out that it was like, not quite. There's still right. this big need for the presentation because the reality is the people who are not cool being on camera, don't want stuff in their face, would rather stay behind the scenes, but still have yeah. a presentation. They still want to stand out but they don't want to stand out the way other people may want to stand out. So we need to add to the portfolio, not yeah. move from one box to the other. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and the other thing is that like, this is not being in a meeting with you, right? It's actually really unnatural to like stare into your eyes on a screen for an hour. <laughs> you know, this is, this is like a, it's weird. Um, and so what we had to do was go, we need to just imagine some new things. Right. And so we did a few different okay. things. One of them we did was, on-screen responses. Um, so what that means is like people can type next and it appears next to them to engage or to give a reaction without having to jump in, you know, like jumping into someone talking is still awkward in online meetings, right? And so letting yes. them do that. Um, another example is that while many of us were pleased to not commute into an office anymore, there were a lot of folks who missed what the office provided, which namely was a sense of place and a sense yeah. of belonging and community and identity. And so one of the things that we built in were name tags, like branded name tags, right? Where your Prezi comes up and it's got your name and title and location, and it's got your logo in the corner. And when you put stuff in, it's got your brand colors in it, right? Think about okay. all the investment that companies made into their offices to create that sense of belonging and identity. And, and some of it was very awesome. intentional. I mean, I was, I was totally. involved with companies and some of like their redesign of office spaces. And there was a lot of thought and intention into being like, Hey, yeah. people are going to be in meetings here. So we want the background to represent our brand. We want people to do all this and sending out a virtual background that leaves a crummy fuzzy thing around your head that yeah. maybe doesn't necessarily always look super great. It yeah. wasn't necessarily giving that same kind of thing. And it was also very static. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And so I think those are a couple of things that surprised us is like, how do people okay. interact and to give them a nonverbal way to do that without disappearing? And then the other thing was the folks who miss the identity and belonging nature of an office um, and to help provide that for them in a, in a virtual context. That, that, was, okay. that was something we weren't expecting. You know, it's funny you bring this up because one of the things you hit on that I even just... 
I'm, this is why I ended up getting out of just pure tech because the human interaction component of it actually is to me more fascinating, like how tech actually can right. do this. But one of the things you hit on, that's actually a small thing that I can see actually having a significant impact is again, you go back to meetings and yes, your name is there when you join, but it's, it's amidst a sea of attendees and all this other stuff. You don't really see this, but even something as small as like, your name badge kind right. of being there saying, this is who I am. This is my role. And this is where I'm located. Just being on screen gives you a sense of identity that like yeah. I'm part of, I'm part of the work family. For sure. For sure. And so I, I think that's been a key. We're actually working on something right now. We've got a product in beta that tries to solve another kind of awkward part of these meetings where like um, the person running the meeting ask the question of the group and nobody knows in what order they're supposed to answer. Okay. Right. And if the boss, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it in chat? Like, is it, am I supposed to jump in and interrupt? Like, yeah. all and stuff. if the boss is like, Christopher, what do you think? There's all this, like, what does that mean that he asked Christopher first? Does he like Christopher or not like Christopher? Did he prep Christopher with the answer? And I'm not supposed to counter it's there. It's gross. And so um, we've actually, we're working on something that's got a popcorn feature where it just randomly is like, you ask a question, you hit the popcorn feature, this person gets highlighted or they get to skip and it randomly moves around and it just takes that weird juju out of the whole Q&A process. Interesting. You know, it is, well, and what's funny is we talked a little bit about this before we went live, but one of the things I talked about or in my post leading up to this yesterday was the proximity bias that's kind of now rearing its ugly head as yeah. now there's this kind of us them attitude of like, well, there's the people in the office and then there's the people not in the office, even yeah. though, like you said, no matter what, somebody's always not in the office. Even if they're right. in the office, sometimes they're not in the office on the same day as everybody else is. But one of the things that I think you, you brought up that I think is a really important piece to highlight is, you know, we tend to have these like polar reactions to it. It was like, everybody was remote and then nostalgia kicked in and everybody went, man, remember when we went back to the, and it was so great and I felt loved and cared for and my sense of right. whole was there. And, and so maybe when I go back to the office, that'll get fixed. And now people are going back going, well, it actually didn't fill that void quite like I thought, right. but what you're getting at is some of these deeper things that are like, well, but it's really what's underneath that, that belong in yeah. that presence, that component. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, um, you know, it's, uh, in some ways we're asking work to do more than it's designed to do <laughs> in terms of its, its personal fulfillment. Right. Um, but how, <laughs> how can we, how can we do as much as we can to make people feel like they're part of the team that they're them being remote, isn't going to have an effect on whether their voice is heard or they're considered for the promotion or the raise. Um, and so making sure that, um, that, the, the screen is the main interaction point of these meetings. If we're going to do that, we better make it awesome. And so that's, that's where we're focused on is making sure that the presentations are awesome on a screen in person or async. That's what you see reflected in the three products. Okay. So with this, I, one thing that I am curious about, um, is, and you hinted at it a little bit, but I think this is one of the important pieces that may be helpful for folks who, you know, are seeing or listening to this is that sometimes there can be a misnomer that the tool will magically solve the problem, right? right. Like, hey, great. If I put my awful presentation in Prezi and then present it, it's going yeah. to be great. And it's like, yeah. no, your awful presentation is just dynamic now, but it's still an awful presentation. Yeah. I'm curious, one, how you've seen behavior shift in this and if where some of those opportunities still lie and yeah. are there some things that you've seen that have helped people make that transition? Cause I have no doubt you can still make a really crappy Prezi video or Prezi presentation just right. like you could with other tools. Yet the potential I think is much higher than in maybe a tool that wasn't really designed with that intent. Yeah. And one of the things that we try to be really honest about is that making a good Prezi takes time. Okay. And it's going to take it's going to take work and thought. And one of the great things about slides is that like it doesn't require that of you. Um, and that <laughs> it's one of the you. good and really bad things about it, quite right. frankly. The presenter doesn't pay the price, but the audience does. 
Yes. Um, and so we try and be upfront about the fact that like, this is going to take you a little bit of time to do one really well. Um, but okay. the outcome of that is a much, is a much better meeting and hopefully much more productive. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, we've made things, um, easier for people to use and we work on that workflow. Uh, we even have a function in Prezi video where you, you can bring your Google slide or PowerPoint in and then take the background out and like this would be the corner of my PowerPoint slide, right? So we do do okay. things to help solve workflow for people and to operate inside the tools that they're comfortable with. But nothing replaces thoughtfulness of the presentation. And, um, and I think we've finally gone through, you know, the, the first cycle of COVID where everyone's like, don't wear a patterned shirt and have a halo light and all this kind of tactical you know, don't look like you're um, phoning in from a wine cellar. Um, and, uh, and, and that allows us to get back to like fundamentals of storytelling and presentations and everything. And that's way deeper than a tool, right? Yeah. The tool is not going to solve that. If you don't know the answer to like why you're there and why now and why people should change, you've got deeper problems, right? Um, and so one of the things we often say to attach ourselves to the upward strategy is that um, every business challenge is at first a communication challenge. Okay. And so, and I would agree. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. And so you've got to if, if you've got to be able to speak to that, and there's no replacing that. And, and one of the things that I love about working at Prezi is just running into people who care so much about their subject that they love it and distill it elegantly inside of Prezi. Um, there's no replacing someone who's done that. Okay. Okay. Well, and I think, you know, you, you see this in presentations all the time where to some degree, you can kind of tell if the person's put thought and effort into the presentation yeah. versus if they just said, I have a bunch of things in my head. Yeah. Now I'm just going to place them on a slide. And then hopefully I'm going to maybe rearrange the slides. So there's some cohesive thing, but then my goal is just to get through all the slides versus, like you said, actually thinking about what is the story I'm trying to communicate right. through this presentation. Right. With consideration for your audience. Yeah. Um, I mean, we cannot, uh, even even less so now, you can, uh, can't take the audience for granted, right? Like for some reason, we are, we've all like succumbed to Zoom fatigue or video conferencing fatigue, right? And we muddle, we get through our day with half hour back-to-back -back meetings on Zoom and we're exhausted. And then what do we do? We roll into our living room and binge on Netflix. <laughs> so it's not the screen. No. It's the content and it's the storytelling and it's the consideration for the audience. That's, that's, um, that's what we can help with and help give life to. Well, and I like that you bring up the Zoom fatigue thing because that, that phrase always irked me a bit in the sense that it just felt like a lazy way of describing, like in justifying being really lazy with our presentations and going, ah, oh, you know, yeah. and, and there, to be fair, there were some legitimate things that I think needed to be addressed. And, you know, if you look at people's calendars now, the one downside to meetings being virtual is, I mean, I just even look at my own. Sometimes you literally yeah. are like, when am I going to go to the bathroom? Because... It, like right. it's back to back to back. And they literally right. start the second, the previous one was where before there was a little bit of flexibility being like, well, we recognize people are kind of going in between meetings. So there's, there's yeah. some grace there. Now it's kind of like, why were you 30 seconds late? We know that you were just on a call before and we were on the call with you. Why are you not here? So I do think there is some legitimate, like, okay. Right. But I do think in some ways, like you said, it was an excuse for poor storytelling and laziness with presentation. Like, Man, people are just so tired of, of zoom meetings. And it's like, I don't think they're tired of, like you said, looking at a screen because they spend right. the rest of their evening doing it. Yeah. So what is it about the medium? Yeah. And, and frankly, I like a good meeting. I do I too. Really, I really like a good meeting. Like that energizes me and my day and my tasks and my team and all those things. Um, but man, that's just soul crushing to have a bad meeting. Again, somebody just showing <laughs> up and you know, reading off the slide and, uh, you know, in my role in partnerships, I interact with a lot of like huge enterprises where that's, that's how you do it. And that's how you get ahead. And I would just urge your audience to be brave, right. To be brave and take a chance and do something creative 
and and uh, and tell a good story, right? And unfortunately, again, getting back to human nature, our our fear of failure is so much greater than our enticement towards success. Um, yeah. And uh, and so you kind of know I can do slides and be okay, but to do something like this, man, it's just so cool, and it makes you stand out and memorable, and the audience will appreciate it. Just respect your audience and try something new. Well, and, and that point you bring up, I think is one of those things where, you know, and I think this is why we're seeing some of the challenges where people are struggling with, you know, how do I navigate a career now that I'm maybe remote or largely remote, or how do I stand out when I'm not in the office? Like I used to be type of a thing. And it is easier to just go with the flow, take the corporate template, yeah. Put your bullets in, copy and paste your Excel table on the slide and just go slide yeah. by slide and do that. And there is a little bit of that fear of, yeah, but if I go a little bit crazy, a little bit wild, right? what's that going to do? And I mean, yeah. my personal experience, I, I tend to be that person that does, I don't yeah. need to ask permission to do. I'm just like, well, you know, what's the worst sure. that's going to happen? They, they're not going to kill me um, right. type of a thing. But I think you're right in terms of encouraging people to say, you don't need to go off the rails. And I think that's one of the things that right. I do like about Prezi is it allows you to be creative and different without <laughs> the example you gave backstage of like laying on a tiger, white tiger rug with, you know, sunglasses to try and be like, what is, yeah. what are you trying? Well, I want, I want to be memorable. Like, well, that's right. probably not the best way to be memorable. Man, I think as some of the folks in your audience, right, these these uh, these trainers, these instructional designers, these folks who have their job is so much harder under this regime of yes. really communicating through a screen. And I think about some of our, our best customers out there who are in uh, learning and development. And when they have taken a chance, it has helped their career. It has lifted their NPS scores on their talks. Their people have better retention more cameras are turned on. Like there is a material difference when you respect your audience enough to consider the storyline and narrative and then match that with a tool that doesn't cause you to disappear into a corner of the screen. Well, and that, so that's where, when, cause I remember when the video piece came out, which what was interesting and, and it's come a long way just even since you launched it, because I was right. familiar with it in its early stages and it was pretty resource intensive. Right. It was a little rough. It was a little rough. It didn't always work super well. And sometimes it would crash. It would crash. I mean, it really would crash your, your thing. So I remember there was a time where it was, it was a little bit rough, but I've actually seen it since. And it's significantly different. And one of the things you brought up, it's some of these small things that make a huge difference. But when you think about any meeting tool, you can have a really engaging conversation. You can be engaging with your audience. And like you said, the second you share screen, it's, it's like you just pushed it off a cliff right? because it goes from like, we're seeing each other, we're smiling, we're enjoying yeah. things, we're laughing about what's going on. And then blah, like right. the whole screen is this. You can't even see the people unless you go up to the top corner and go, Oh, I need to go into thumbnail view and oops, now I need to go to gallery yeah. type of thing. I mean, it really does destroy the experience making that small change. Yeah, for sure. It's like, uh, it's like at the business lunch back in the old days when like that moment came where you had to talk business and somebody like took a laptop out of their bag. You're like, oh, <laughs> fun part right. of the lunch is over. Waiter. Right. Um, and right. nowadays when you share screen, it's just a permission slip for people to check their phones. Like, check Twitter, play Clash of Clans, whatever they do during a meeting they find boring. And, um, and don't like, don't give them that permission slip, right? They owe something yeah. to you as well. Yeah, well, and I, and that's just it because going back to this point, and I do think while there are, you know, I love that we talked about just the authenticity of the fact that, you know, you can in some ways fake engagement behind a right. webcam. You, know, you place your webcam yeah. just right and you've got a big widescreen monitor and you got 37 things up and you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh, type of a thing. But I would say in general, people are more engaged when they're seeing each other and there's it's interesting watching people's yeah. screens and seeing what they're doing. 
But the second that slide goes up, you know that maybe only three or four cameras are showing. So chances yeah. are people aren't paying attention to it anyway. And 98% of the real estate of the screen is now this TLDR death right. by PowerPoint slide up on your, and it does, it almost, and I've seen it in engagement rates where literally the second you do that, people just, you can almost just Darn. see the alt tabs, which if you have the right software, you actually can physically see the data of the yeah, alt yeah. tab the second it yeah. happens. Christopher, what would you say is like the attitude amongst L and D pros right now with tools, right? Cause is, is there just like tool fatigue or are they jaded on the promises or are they still kind of hopeful that they're going to crack the code? You know, so here's my take. And if people are watching and you've got takes, definitely comment. Cause I'd be curious what other folks take is on this. My observation and what I've seen, and this is one of the challenges. And I actually, I, I think I streamed it already or I pre-recorded it for when I'm out on leave. But one of the things that I think happened was when the pandemic hit, there was this surge of tools. So not only because yeah. people were going out and trying literally everything they could find, because they were right. just grasping at straws. You know, they, they were suddenly forced to be like, I have to do something different. And so yeah. I'll sign up for this and sign up for this and sign up for this. And they had 300 things that they'd signed up for. And they did kind of get fatigued and it was hard to differentiate. Well, when do I use this one versus right. this one? And now I've got 37 subscriptions and corporate finances getting after me going like, do you really need all of these tools? I think now we're at this state where, and this is where I think some of the tools that do well are going to shine mm -hmm. is there is almost this cosmic reset that's happening because I think yeah. what happened was there were a lot of tools that spun up that thought we can do that. Yeah. But they didn't actually understand the core of what doing it well is even like you said, like integrating and how simple is it to actually work with these yeah. tools? Cause people aren't going to get rid of the other tools. So some of those things and some of the history of like, how are consumers actually doing things? So some of those I'm seeing one start to die off. Yep. There's a lot more pressure for people to say, you need to actually look at your portfolio of stuff and reevaluate what are you using and, and yep. how are you using it? And I do think that's where um, people are now in this state where they are a little fatigued, but I think there's almost this new eagerness to say, okay, but we should be doing better because we suddenly surged ourselves with a bunch right. of tools, but we didn't really get better because we got really right. spread too thin, honestly. It's like, it's like your uh, general ed years at college are over and you got to pick a major now. Like you tried a bunch yeah. of stuff and now we've got to settle into something that's durable. Um, that's really interesting. And what is, um, what did the economic headwinds, what effect does that have on this process? Do you think, right? Like suddenly folks are looking at cost centers and pressures yeah. and, and how L and D gets judged and what used to be be innovative is now, you know, show up with your metrics of ROI. So before I before I hit that one, boss boss agrees with me on this, and I and I'm seeing this common thread: the yes. tools that were doing it well, they were already in this space. A lot of the tools that spun up and were like, "Hey, now we're a presenter tool," or "Hey, now we're yeah. a, a design tool." It's like, uh, you, just because you got a subscription library to stock imagery and uh, right. you know, design, like PowerPoint actually still works better than you do, and I think those yeah. are starting to die off. Um, some, I can't, I can't see the name, but I think somebody else brought up there's, and I think this is kind of going back yeah. to it, this surge of these new tools that suddenly were making these big promises. They promise to integrate, they promise to do all this stuff well. And I think a lot of them have not delivered on that promise. And that's why I think sure. the ones that have been doing it for a while yeah, and have been and have been listening. I think that's the big yeah. difference. The one that have been doing it for a while and have been listening are starting to reform and go. Hey, we actually really doubled down on some of these things. Here's how we've really enhanced, and that's why I was really impressed to see how Prezi yeah. has evolved over this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're seeing a little bit of that too. I loved what that user just said about like uh, the the over promise of integration. Um, one of you know, there's some great tools out there, but they require like a Hollywood, you know, production yes. rig um, to, to pull things off. And also some of this too, is that like the tools we wanted to integrate with um, weren't ready. 
right? And so yeah. I'll give you an example. We're just now, we just now launched a new Prezi video for Zoom. Okay. And it and in the first two years of the pandemic, Zoom was completely focused on like scaling and making sure stuff didn't like crash on people. And right, now, because the bandwidth on their server load was so high. It's like they did not have capacity to talk integrations. Unbelievable. And so now the pots off boil a little bit and we can have thoughtful conversations around users and their needs. And so we just launched a really tight integration with Zoom where um, you, it doesn't require a separate app for Prezi and it doesn't require messing around with a virtual camera and it all just works and our UI is embedded into your Zoom UI. And so okay. it's, it's, it's almost like now there's breathing space for people to be thoughtful about the users that again, is sort of settled into their stratas what do they need? Yeah. And now let's build the tech to, to make something that works well for them. We've got a great customer in South America that does um, language classes. And overwhelmingly, they're working on low powered machines with low bandwidth on a single laptop monitor. Okay. How do we how do we serve them? Right. And, yeah. and they have hiccups. And so um, and so it's it's an interesting time. But I think I think we've gone through that big bump and now it's it's kind of rising up into something that is meaningful and durable. Well, and I think that's why to boss's point, my observation is the tools that were, I mean, I think there's some new players that have come into the space that have done really well and carved out maybe new markets. I mean, even yeah. StreamYard, which I use for streaming, like yeah. live streaming wasn't even really a thing. You know, yeah. so Restream and StreamYard, they kind of were like this wasn't really a market that existed before and we right. kind of created a niche and then suddenly everybody was a you know webinar streaming platform and many of them died off because it was like right. it's a lot harder than you think to do this well sure is and i think similar to some of these other tools and i think that's where and it was actually sonia so sonia thanks for your comment on that um it is this there was a lot of complexity that i think a lot of the end users didn't see like you yeah. said, like Zoom, it was like Zoom was just trying to figure out how to not blow up their server farms because right. the whole world started using Zoom overnight. Yeah. yeah. And there were a lot of companies that similar, they had cool productivity tools. They'd been around forever. I have to imagine even for you, suddenly the pandemic hit and it was like, yeah. and, it, and it's like, how do we think about this? This was not something for we sure. expected and all efforts went to that. So right. people really did have to shift. And I think now we're seeing a bit of that rebound yep. where the ones who are standing true are standing strong and now they're maturing in really, yep. really important and valuable ways. And that's where even you showing Prezi video today compared to what I saw several years ago when we tried, right. it's, it's matured a lot in terms yeah. of, it's integration and how it flows and how seamless it is in all of that. And I'm excited with that. I think, I think the good news is all that spark of competition actually pushed some of the bigger players to go, we've got to step up our game in this because there's real yep. opportunity. Yep. These players could eat our lunch. And I think companies that did that hard work, they're the ones that to me are standing out versus yep. the ones that were like, nobody's ever going to disrupt, you know, I won't yeah. mention names of companies, but like nobody's ever going to disrupt us because we're the virtual meeting tool of choice for corporate enterprise. And then right, it was like, right. and now you're right. now you're like BlackBerry. Nobody uses yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you, you you your timing is fortuitous, right? Like developing Prezi Video <laughs> in November of 2019. Yeah, right? worked out really well for you. But I will say, in terms of listening and not taking anything for granted. The harder we work, the luckier we get. And this Prezi team yeah. is really working hard at listening and leaning in on, on what's ahead. Yeah. No. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time, David, to join me and also just give a greater update on where it's been. Because again, it's a tool I think many people in the back of their mind are familiar with, but it's it's a tool that's like, in my opinion, just grown up and become something completely different than what people's memories of it may be. And so it was almost like, a, a class reunion in some ways of talking That's back right. to Prezi. So I, I really enjoyed it. And hopefully those of you who watch and listen to this during and after uh, it not only just helped you recognize the tool and what it can do, but also made you think a little bit differently about some of these simple changes around how are we actually being more engaging or how are you in standing out in a world where there is a lot of noise and a lot of distractions. Perfect. Well, awesome. Christopher, thanks so much for having me on. Nice to chat with you and your audience. Thanks so much for what you're doing. 
All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we will see you next week.